I'm so excited to hear the stories this guy's going to tell. One of my favorites to watch back in the day, the one and only Brian Kendricks. Brian, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks a lot for having me. I'm excited to be here. You, you know, when I think about how you started in wrestling, we're roughly the same age. I'm a little older. I broke in a little a little before you. But there was not a better in-ring performer ever, but especially at the time, than Shawn Michaels. How did you get hooked up with Shawn so early in your career? Um, it, it's just the way the world worked. It uh, was at the right age. Um, when he opened up the Shawn Michaels Wrestling Academy, I had just started wrestling prior to that. Um, wasn't a year in even and saw that he was uh, opening up a school and, and I applied and got in. I was one of the first kids to send in their money, I suppose. But uh, that was it. I just uh, I saw an opportunity and I, I chased it. What was the actual facility like? So what it was was on top of Dona Juanita's or Dona Juanita's. Uh, it's a Mexican restaurant. And I'm from small town, Washington State. So it, it's just real isolated. Now I'm in San Antonio on Zarzamora Street. Uh, signs are in Spanish. Spanish, like Mexican restaurant. Donna, Donna speaks English. Nobody else does. And we're in an attic on top of it, an attic with pigeons. Uh, it was big. It was a big attic. Uh, it was hot as hell. And that was it. It was, it was, it was a um, wood floor uh, uh, attic, probably. 30, I don't know, maybe 40 feet across and 100 feet long, something like that. So you moved down there. How long were you in Texas for? Uh, yeah, I moved to, uh, I was down there for a year. Um, so I'd, I'd moved down to Texas prior to that to go to a different school, NWA Southwest. Sean opened up the school, moved back again down to Texas. And at that point, I was there for about a year before I got shipped off to Memphis. Who's uh, in the classes with you? Is it uh, Brian Danielson and Lance Cade? Yes, yes. Uh, so Danielson and Cade, and then uh, there was a fourth wrestler named Chris Schultz, Shooter Schultz, who got signed yes. as well for developmental. He was excellent. He just, you know, people decided to leave at a certain point, and he left at a young age, but he was great. What, what did Sean actually do? Did he get in the ring? Did he teach you promos? Like, what was the actual, like, class setting like? So it was... Uh, Rudy Boy Gonzalez. Uh, there's also Mad Dog Ken Johnson was there for quite a bit of it uh, early on. Um, Paul Diamond was there as well, but nice. um, but Rudy was the most consistent. He was the one to open the doors. Uh, all that to say, though, Sean was there every day except one, and that was the first episode of SmackDown that they taped. Other than that, he you know he still went to this. He still went to practice. Uh, he might show up while we we're doing our stretches, but he'd be there. And uh, he was quasi hands on. He had his assistant, Rudy. So Rudy was very physical. He would go in there, wouldn't really take too many bumps. Sean, this is, um, but was uh, um, was more than just an overseer. Um, he was he was, in, in fact, involved. Um but all that to say is, is so was Rudy. Rudy is very much uh, my coach as well. Sean ever smarten you up? I don't mean smarten you up, but I mean to hear like smarten you up to actual the business of pro wrestling. You know how to take care of yourself, uh, money. Like did they ever go anything like that? Or because a lot of like I I talked to a lot of guys who've been to the power plant, and they're like the power plant was great. They taught us how to work. We knew nothing about the business though. You know mm. what I mean? Yeah. So what? What he did do was he had his uh, his father come in and talk to us. Um, <clears throat> Sean's father, Richard, came in, and Richard was a financial guy. Um, Sean himself uh, apparently would give his checks to his parents to then give him an allowance. Um, and so he did give us sound financial advice early on to do that. I don't think any of us did. Uh, I think Danielson wound up to be uh, – Hell, he didn't have to be sound financially. Danielson's made so much money, he could have screwed up and still had money. But I think he was very smart. Um, I wasn't that smart, and I didn't make that much money to begin with. So, so you, you remember the ring announcer from WCW, Gary Capetta? Of course. Yeah, so Gary lived down the street from me. Like mm -hmm. He lived like five minutes from me uh, back in the day. 
and he and I were really close, great guy. And one night he had uh, Danielson and John Walters mm. at his house uh, for dinner. I said, come on over. So I'm having dinner, and this is way before you know the, the WWE, Dan, uh, mm. Brian Danielson. I'm having dinner with this guy, and I'm like, this is the nicest guy in the world. He's, he loves pro wrestling. It's a shame he's never going to make any money. Like that yeah. was my thought in my in my head, you know. Yeah. Like that's I was like, it's a shame this guy's never going to make any money. Wow, yeah. what a career he he's had. What was he like uh, breaking in and you know learning the ropes with him? Um. So what was great about Danielson uh, is he was really driven. Um. I was I was competitive in that. Um. Uh, I I knew I had to keep up. And, and so the only way I could do that without any physical gifts is to put in work. And so Danielson would, would see the work I would put in and he would put in work, or I, I would see the work he'd put in. So I would mimic that. And, and ultimately it was us staying after practice, the two of us after practice just putting in time together. Uh, we we're both from Washington state, small town, Washington. So I guess there's probably some sort of, um, similar sense of humor and sensibility uh and and then just on top of being two years apart so roughly the same age but uh really driven to to make it in wrestling i really love the way we'll we'll get to the cruiserweight classic but i love the way he talked about you during the cruiserweight classic well, and brought some you know what i mean what just brought legitimacy yeah, to it and just you know stuff like that it, you knew there was a, a, a past there a good past uh with you guys uh, so talk to me about I I remember too like that you hear and you read the, the sheets back in the day oh these four guys get signed from Shawn Michaels school what was that like for you guys? So I mean I was so young that I didn't know no better you know what I mean uh, I go I get signed wow when now I'm with WWE uh, I'm nervous the whole time but man I was too nervous to talk to a girl in high school now I'm around superstars and I'm especially nervous. Um, but I was also angry and I was also driven. And so that helped keep me afloat. Um, but it was, uh, man, it was weird. It was scary. Um, being in Memphis, I really liked it. They ultimately, they gave me the key to the building because I was always in the building. And, uh, you know, had a revolving house of different uh, roommates. You know, Danielson at one point, Lance Cade, Shooter Schultz. Uh, but so Ron Killings as well. Uh, uh, Jason Sensation lived there for a stretch. Molly Holly lived there for a little bit. Joe Legend lived there for a little bit. Kazarni was there for a few weeks. So it was like, a, I guess I was at the right age to be living at a, a frat house. And it kind of was. When So we went to Memphis, but what actually was it? Was it a school? Was it a territory? It was it was a developmental territory without an instructor. They had a building, um, a building with a ring, uh, and our ring was the old sixteen by sixteen foot shotgun Saturday night ring, and we had a nineties uh, like Yokozuna ring, like the ultra stiff ring too. We didn't did, we didn't have a yeah, yeah like you know the, the jobs ones, back yeah. in the day those were rough rings. Well, Oh, brother, we could, we weren't even – I took one bump in there, and Regal said, nobody bumps in this ring. You're <laughs> you're out there trying to make dudes look like stars to make a couple of hundred bucks, killing yourself on that ring. I can only imagine. Yeah, Awful ring. Yes. <laughs> um, but all, all that to say is we didn't have a, we didn't have a coach. Uh, William Regal decided that he would take it upon himself, Tracy Smothers as well, but nobody was – hired as a coach they were just kind of in memphis so it was it was a uh, very loose and wild to think that what it is today with seven different coaches guest coaches yeah. great training acting coaches very different promo room what's that you know they had a promo room you go in there yeah. work on your promo wow yeah 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 yeah, yeah. How, how often did they run and where did they run Ooh. So um, we would run every Wednesday at the Oxford Billiards Club, which is in Oxford, Mississippi, uh, which is where the, um, you know, the Rebels, the running Rebels, uh, Ole Miss, uh, the college. Anyways, that's that's uh, where Oxford was. And then we would run the New Daisy. Well, I think they kind of ended that um, on Beale Street 
but we would just run throughout Mississippi, Tennessee, and Arkansas, um, a couple hundred miles. But the only consistent show was both the TV taping at the Channel 5 studios and uh, the Oxford Billy Clubs on Wednesday. And what happened? They just – did they release all four of you? Did they close down the territory? So they, they closed down the territory. Uh, they closed down the territory. They opened up um, Cincinnati. Half of uh, half of us got fired, uh, meaning of, of the group. The only one who kept their job out of the four of us um, was Lance Cave. Lance Cave kept his job. He moved on to Cincinnati. Um, and ultimately, you know, a year later, I moved in with Lance Cade in Cincinnati. Uh, but Danielson, Shooter, and myself all got released. How did you end up back there? Because you, because you came back, then you uh-huh. left and came back again, and you uh-huh. left and came back again, right? Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Uh-huh. Okay, so we're at Memphis. You got, re- you uh-huh. got released. How did you end up going back for that the brief run there? Okay, so I wound up um, moving out to California to try to get to Japan. Then Chris Benoit recovers in Cincinnati from a neck from his neck surgery. Uh, Lance Cade calls and tells me Chris Benoit is coming to Cincinnati. I get this harebrained scheme to move to Cincinnati to train with Chris Benoit, and it worked. Uh, and here I am training with Chris Benoit, and then I get a call uh, from out in California saying that opportunity to go to Japan has shown up. Can you be here in 48 hours? So, boom, I went to Japan. And because of those two things, uh, WWE gave me a call a few months later. Uh, Since I was doing Japan, living in Cincinnati, Ring of Honor became um, a promotion that that started to get some sort of notoriety. And so I I got a call from that. Pretty crazy. You went back for such a brief run, but you were in there with guys like Kurt Angle, with John Cena. I mean, you were in there with some top, top guys. Yeah, pretty crazy, right? And I wasn't doing, I didn't do any um, like meaningful programs or anything like that with anybody. But as far as like fun little trivia stuff, like, yeah, dude, I got to get choke slammed by Undertaker. That's all right. You know, I should be happy with that. You know, I got to, I got to do a rap battle with John Cena as a kid. That's pretty fun. So I, I, I should enjoy those things. Did you get a chance to actually work with John? We just wrestled in a squash match, you know what I mean? A six-man tag. Uh, ultimately, he beat the hell out of me in five minutes or less, and then off he goes. Uh, the, hold on. Do you want to know what a wrestling nerd I am? Mm. I swear I swear, I didn't look this up. I, 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 I didn't look this up. It was you. Oh, I want to say Benoit and Rhino versus John Cena and the FBI. Yes. Was that it? Oh, my God, yes. On, on, my, on my kids, I haven't thought about that match in 20 something years, but I'm just, I'm weird wow. like that with wrestling facts, man. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, mean, I did some research. I had some bullet points. That match wasn't even on the radar. I just, yeah. I just, I'm weird like that. That's I remember, crazy. I remember John Cena coming in the ring and saying something like Monacati on the real John Gotti, something like that. Yeah. I, and I only saw the match once. I'm just weird. I'm just, yeah. I'm a wrestler. Wow, dude. Yeah. That's wild. That's yeah. wild. Your brain works different, man. <laughs> So you leave, you leave the, this is what Paul London told me that he said, yeah. he said, Brian was there. He wanted to wrestle. So he, yeah. he said to them, I want to leave and go to Japan and actually, you know, get a chance to wrestle. Is yeah. that really how it went? That's how it went. I, oh I, man, that's yeah. awesome. It was, um, so I, what it was is I was young and, and I was wrestling guys that I thought I was better than, and that that's, I shouldn't have been thinking that way. But I wasn't wrestling Eddie, and I wasn't wrestling Chris, and I wasn't wrestling Kurt. Uh, and these are the guys I wanted to wrestle. So I, I went to Vince McMahon after a meeting, and I thanked him for the opportunity. I said, but I'm I'm too young to not be to not be improving. Um, and he says, what are you suggesting? I said, I'm suggesting I go back to Japan to wrestle guys who are better than me. And uh, he said, go, go get your release. And I did. Um, and that was it. That was it. And I, I mean, ultimately where I am today is because I left uh, my coaching position at WWE because I wanted to go wrestle again at 43 years old. I wanted to go wrestle. I'm 44 now. And, you know, the gamble didn't pay off. Um, but in a way it did because I am out there wrestling again. And, um, what, what I'll say is, is this, Ace, 
the uh, while I love the coaching and I really do, it's the only job in the world that can take my passion away from me. And that's wrestling is working for for a wrestling company. And if they don't allow you to wrestle, if I'm a chef, I can still wrestle. If I'm a teacher, I can still wrestle. But if I work for a wrestling company, they can dictate if I wrestle or not. And that's that's my art. And that's what I do. So anyways. Well, you, you got balls and you got art. Like that's crazy. Thank you. Thank How you. old were you when you asked for a release? How that old was were you like then? 23. I think it was like 23 at that time. Go up to a thousand 23 year old indie wrestlers right now and say, would you ever leave the WWE? Oh. You know, that's just, man. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. That's amazing. So tell me about you. Japan. Yeah, man. That's yeah. Awesome. So I, I, uh, you know, I, I was wrestling for zero one, zero one. Um, it was a, a fairly new company that that uh, was an offshoot of New Japan. So I had some really good wrestlers. And Steve Carino was uh, booking the Gaijin at the time, along with Rick Bassman was my connection. I love Carino, too. Uh, I love his sister. I love his son. Uh, yeah. Um, so I was I was out there in zero one wrestling as Leonardo Spanky because Hashimoto thought I looked like uh, uh, like Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, and so not a bad thing, in, bro. That's not a bad, bad thing. thing. It's not a bad thing. It could be a lot worse. Because I'll tell you, uh, uh, Re- Regal's son, who's now uh, with the WWE, but as a young man, uh, said I looked like the guy from the Warriors with the bottles. And that's not nearly as complimentary, you know. Warriors. <laughs> that doesn't. He's not nearly as handsome as. Yes, I'll take. I'll take DiCaprio. Um, <laughs> But uh, so, dude, I was wrestling. I, I, I was getting to wrestle to Kiowa, who I think is a genius. You know, or uh, Otani, who I think um, is is up there with Shawn Michaels as far as being able to feel a guy and, and watching a guy sell on screen. And even though it's preposterous, you you still you feel them. And I don't know, like I I, I really loved my time out there. How long were you there for? Um. That so I did four four or five tours before getting signed to that TV contract. And when I left, I did about a year and a half. Um, so maybe fifteen tours in that time, something like that. And then you go back. So did you go to TNA and then WWE? I well, I did a, a, a couple of shows for TNA, but not under contract or anything. And then um, got a call from Paul. Uh, he said that they were. D. Malenko was looking to get a hold of you. you. Would you be interested in coming back? Well, in the meantime, Japan, we've been talking about a contract, a really low-end contract, but just something that would be on paper, and they couldn't deliver. So I went back, and, and then Paul and I formed a team again, and we we're off and running. Talk to me about teaming up with Paul. Yeah, it was awesome, man. Um, he uh, – so – Really, it's just kind of the classic, you know, the 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 young, uh, you know, fresh baby face tag team, you know, the exciting, exciting guys, um, and so that's what Paul and I would would provide. Paul really did provide it. He did death defying moves. I've always called myself a, a fake high flyer. Um, he would actually do like a shooting star. I I don't I don't have the courage to do it or a four fifty anything like that. Um, but we we had a fast dynamic, and uh, you know we were young and getting to see the world together. It was great. It was a lot of fun. And um, whenever I do a signing, you know, at a, a convention or anything like that, um, when chatting with with wrestling fans, that seems to be the time of my career that they enjoy the most. Was the time that Paul and I spent together. How did you find out you were winning the tag belts? We found out that day when they when Ted DiBiase apologized to to uh, Joey and uh, Morrison that they had to take the belts off of them because of an upcoming suspension, um, and so we we were we we were told as we were getting ready to put together the match, uh, finding out because yeah they didn't. It, Look, guys, we didn't want to do this, but our hands were tied because we had to defend you. And so I've never, I, it, and it could be in my head, but I, I 
remember Paul and I looking at each other like, what the hell, man? Like, you, you could have said this before we walked into the room, you know, pretending you were happy for. It. Yeah. Anyways, that's how we found just, out. Or just don't say it. Just what don't say hell? it. Just don't say it. Just don't say it. Yeah. But it's not because <laughs> we love you and Paul, Brian. It's because these other guys screwed up. Congratulations. That's exactly oh, it. And, and we're really sorry. We, we know you screwed up and we're sorry. We have to punish you. We wish we didn't have to, but we do. So we have to. And the, the worst part is you're losing to these guys. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if we had known, we would have rebooked this whole program. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Funny. You know, what I found fascinating about your, your tag team run is you guys were so exciting. You were these fight from underneath baby faces, and they had nobody lined up for you guys really to work with. You know, they didn't have, like, a lot of teams at the time. Yeah, they, they – and they just don't. They, um, you know, come to find out later when when uh, touring uh, Titan Towers and ultimately talking with, with Shane McMahon, I asked, you know, this place has got a bunch of – uh, wrestling stars all over the walls, but I don't see any tag teams. And he says, well, not since Legion of Doom have I found myself interested in tag team wrestling. Um, oh, being Shane, and, and, and I, oh, damn, you know, uh, we're doomed. Because um, we are currently your tag, you know. Um, but uh, that was it. It was just wasn't a featured thing. And and even, I guess, in the in the South, when it was was hot, I don't know if there was five legitimate teams at any time you know uh maybe there was but in wwf there never was in my career wwe there was never five tag teams uh, on a on a on a show do you remember i had i had remember bar sukoff yeah sure yeah. yeah i was talking to him uh previously and we were talking about those survivor series matches and they had mm. five baby face teams and five heel teams i mean tag team wrestling used to be such a huge part it's one of the reasons why i fell in love with wrestling you know, it's, i it's, love tag team wrestling i do too and, and and the um you know the thing about tag team wrestling that makes it different from a singles match or anything else there's a very clear objective you know that we know that when he gets to that partner that we know what we're going for, you know, and, and, and it builds towards that. We're in a, in a, a singles match or whatever. When these moments turn around, we don't know when they happen until they've happened. But in, in a tag match, the goal is to, to get to your partner who can help you out of this jam. And, it's, and, and when he does, the crowd erupts if you build it right. And it's beautiful. And it only happens in tag wrestling. Yeah. Did you like working with Caden Murdoch, your old buddy? Uh, oh, Lance yeah. Caden? Yeah, yeah, loved it, loved it. Yeah, yeah, loved working with them. Um, God, it's hard to say who are our favorites to work with, but I will always say that uh, Idol Stevens and Casey James were a lot of fun for a team that doesn't get uh, remembered because their their time together was so brief. They were really both super talented wrestlers. Yeah, talking about. Uh... Deuce and Domino. It's, it's a con I always hear people talk highly about one and not yeah. so highly about the other. What was your experience like? Yeah. So, so it, what it, what it was, I think ultimately was we had we had a, a, a tough time, a and you know one of them wasn't too keen on bumping for us. Um, but I think the reason was uh, looking at it, you know, he comes from he was a generational talent. He comes from a hall of fame dad who's going to look at it is look, if you're bumping for these guys, these guys are cruiserweights. How are you going to be perceived as a star? So I'm going to have to give, give him a pass as an adult realizing like he can't, he can't argue with his dad. His dad is a hall of famer. His dad could be giving him very sound advice. Um, but his dad could also be wrong. The, the, the day may have changed. You might be seen as more professional by actually going out there and, and helping build these stars because that's what we do now. Um, but yeah, I, th I think I, th I think he heard his dad's voice in his head when he didn't want to bump for us. That's good advice for 1982. Maybe not the yeah. best advice for well, yeah, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. In 2007, yeah, I, I, I think so too. Yeah. So this is me now, making excuses for him. Yeah. <laughs> um. How is Cherry to work with? I broke in. Uh, she broke in in Jersey. Actually, I, 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 I always text her and say hello. She's 
I used to work with her before her main roster uh, debut. Yeah. Did you get along? Super sweet. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Liked her a lot. Why'd they take the belts off you guys? Um, They wouldn't say. They, uh, you know, ultimately, uh, an excuse I got later was that they hadn't changed belts overseas in a while, so they thought it'd be a good idea. And my retort was, this was a Tuesday SmackDown filmed in Milan. The okay. day the day before was also filmed in that very same building where they put the Intercontinental title on Santino Morella, who was in the audience. Right. Right. They said a while. They meant 24 hours. <laughs> yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's been almost like a full day. Yeah, like, oh, well, man, like, a rough excuse. But I think ultimately, like, the, belt, the, the belts were never death. The, they weren't supposed to be on us in the, in the first place. So the universe kind of like blew us along in the breeze for a, you know almost the year when we were never supposed to have them in the first place. So I think they just finally found the time. Let's get it off these guys. I never thought about this. I never asked anybody this. Any pain in the ass stories traveling with the belts? Dude, so uh, it's it's a little goofy because you you I don't look like a wrestler except I've got long hair. Um, so when I, you have to either take it out of your bag at TSA or leave it in your bag when they're going to take it out. So, so you feel stupid just taking out this belt and presenting it like you're a hot shot. You're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Best case scenario is either somebody likes wrestling and, oh, that's neat, or they say nothing and off you go. Um, but a lot of times you get like, a, a look because a lot of people don't like wrestling you know they don't watch <laughs> wrestling so wrestling is fake wrestling is stupid therefore i'm better than you that means i can give you a snarky look even though we don't know each other and because i'm tsa you can't say a damn thing about it like that i i don't miss that at all yeah cletus this boy thinks he's a champion you know <laughs> right right <laughs> Boy thinks he's hot stuff. Look at this belt he's got. Oh, oh man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know that stuff's fake. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Um what were your interactions with Vince with Vince? I mean, well, I'll say that again and edit. What were your interactions with Vince McMahon like? Uh man, so anytime I went and talked with him, I had to build up the courage to go and talk to him. Um and, you know, a lot of times it's waiting outside his office and busy day and knocking on the office and God, you know, and if he answers. Um, so it was always with something important to say other than if you saw him in the halls. Hello, boss. You know, how are you today, sir? Uh, he was very honest. Um, you know, he, you know, I would go in and complain. I, you know, this, well, what do you think of that? Okay, yes, sir. You know, and and ultimately uh, at the end of my, my uh, the Brian Kendrick run there, you know, I was uh, saying, what do I need to do to get into the Money of the Bank match? And he's saying, I think you're shit in the bed. If it wasn't for Pat Patterson, I would have fired you already. Um, like, oh, wow, this is news to me. But he told me, you know, he told me straight up. And, you know, if I were to ask him whatever, he would let me know. So uh, at the same time, you know, if you go in there threatening to quit, you have to be willing to quit. And so, you know, I've gone in there and, and quit and I've gone in there and, and threatened to quit if something didn't happen and something happened and you'll call your bluff. And so, yeah, I don't know. I, I, uh, I don't want to believe it's real that he doesn't own it. Anymore. I don't want to believe that that's real. That's like a death to me. It, it is. It's really, that's, that's sadder than a lot of deaths to me is the McMahon's not owning it anymore. Crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. Any advice Vince ever gave you that stuck in your head that you can remember? Nothing to me in in particular, but advice that he gave to a room. And and this was back when the Ben Was and, and Bob Hollies and this was really talented wrestlers. And he used to have a lot of meetings. And, and he would say, we're making movies. And, and they don't understand what a hip toss feels like. It's this. And, you know, everybody was mocking him later for doing this Vogue thing. But 
but to me that was it like it, it's that's what matters it's all this it's all this and everybody knows what stubbing their toe feels like but they don't know what taking a hip lock uh, hip toss feels like you know so they've got to you've got to be able to convey that with your face your body doesn't do it and so i just it made me relook uh, uh wrestling entirely wow it's great advice it's really good advice wow yeah 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 make movies yeah and you like and people laugh at it, you know, but it depends on how you look at it. But what I believe it is is we are trying to get people to feel something. And depending if it's whether it's excitement through high spots or drama through selling, um, you know, whether it's peril through through these potential deathmatch, you know, tables and stuff, whatever it is we're trying to get these people to feel, we're trying to get them to feel something, I think. Um and what I think it is, is getting them to feel what we feel. And so, uh, yeah, I think he's brilliant. And I, and I miss him. I'm going to miss him. Yeah. So when they break you and Paul up, do they tell you anything that's going to happen? Do they say you're going in this direction? He's going in this direction. Was there a reason or one day Nothing. on TV, you broke it up? Yeah. That was one day on TV, we're broken up. We we go, well, we got drafted and, and split, but we we get drafted to Raw and did very little for about a year. It was mostly like Velocity or, or Sunday Night Heat type shows and then split again. Uh, and that was just by the draft. Now, they, they split us. We weren't really on TV. We weren't doing anything relevant. So it wasn't like a shocking split at that point. Yeah, you guys never had like matches or a turn or anything, right? No, no. It just... That was it. One day, one was drafted here and the other stay. Yeah. Talk to me about uh, the Brian Kendricks. Yeah, uh, it was a lot of fun. My wife uh, uh, helped concoct the look. Um, that came about at a moment of frustration when uh, I did go to the boss uh, after blowing up and uh, in anger and, and saying, I want to push her. I want my release. And well, what do you got for me? Uh, well, my mother's a Mensa. My father's a paranoid schizophrenic. He told me if we can't do something with that, it's okay, go down to Tampa and find a heater. I said, thank you, sir. And uh, came back with uh, with Big Z as my, as my guy. Uh, and he loved the look. And then we were teaming a week after that, I think. Yeah, very, very shortly after. Uh, you don't ask, you don't get. So, it, it's like with old, what's old is new, hmm. like that formula of the smaller guy with the big heater. It's, I mean, it's as old as anything in wrestling, but it it it's gonna work. It's gonna work. It's gonna work if you've got if the person is is hateable enough, and and especially if you know that the only reason he can get away with this is because of this big guy, then that's great, you know, and then. And then what's also great is eventually that big guy turns on the little guy, you know, makes him, yeah, yeah, it's classic. Oh, so who was who was uh, Ezekiel Jackson anyway? Was he just part of the developmental system? He was part of the developmental system. Uh, his his name uh, was Ricklon, but when I read it, it said Ryklon. And uh, wow, what a name. And in fact, when I, when I told Vince ab uh, about him and here's the guy, and he even said, I remember, Ryklon, how could you forget a name like that? Uh, yeah, this is money. Then they changed his name. Of course yeah. they <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he was just, a, it was a great contrast. You know what I mean? Here I am, the small, pasty white guy. Here's a big black dude all jacked up. It's just, it, it just visually, it, it, it works. Uh, and uh, met the guy, liked the guy. You know, it was, it was between him or Seamus. Uh, when I saw like who could be the heaters, um, I think it worked out for the best for Seamus. That Seamus, you know, did not get chose as the heater. Yeah, you know, you, you ever you, you ever go out or you ever go to a bar and you're there's that one friend that just runs his effing mouth the whole time <laughs> and he's he's tough because he's got his whole room of people behind him. So yeah, man, it's a it's a great formula. I mean, you had some yeah. high profile matches during that run too. It was a fun little stint. Yeah, yeah, fun little stint. That was why, nice. did that one, why did that one come to an end? Oh, ultimately because of my attitude, you know. Um, I I was uh, – and, and, 
you know, like I, I, I wasn't in, in TV shape, you know, uh, I, I'm on TV. I should have a six pack. I didn't have a six pack. Um, you know, I would, uh, they didn't want me smoking weed, you know? Okay. So you're going to find me fine. I'll pay my fine. And, and that's, how do you, if you find this kid and he doesn't care and he's happy to pay the fine, then what do we do? So we try to teach this kid by having him lose to uh, a midget, or have him lose to horn swaggle. But I didn't care. I thought it was fun. You know, like it was, I didn't, I was too caught up in my own, in my own nonsense, you know? Uh, and so that was it. Yeah. I was, I was unreliable outside of the ring, I would say. Um, before we go, can we do two things? Can you talk to me about yeah. Chris Benoit? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so Chris Benoit is a man who I admire. Um, I loved his uh, <laughs> intensity. I, I, uh, well, so all that to say is, yeah, my, my buddy Lance Cade called me, uh, said Chris Benoit is coming here to <clears throat> recover from neck surgery. Uh, do you want to come move on and live on my floor? I said, yes. And so I moved out there. And uh, there was training. It was developmental. I wasn't under developmental. Um, I attend practice. <clears throat> practice is done. Everybody leaves. And I'm wrestling an invisible man for a while. And turns out that there was a monitor. Or that I was being filmed. And uh, then I wrestled Jamie Noble. Uh, later that night, and it went quite well. And all that to say is that Chris decided to pick me as the guy to train with. Uh, he wanted, you know, he was going to recover with somebody, and he picked me. I wasn't under contract. Uh, I came out there with the hope that I could train with Chris Benoit, and it happened. And so it was only for a few weeks uh, that he and I would train together. And then uh, later on, uh, in fact, Paul and I rode with with Benoit and it was quite intimidating uh at the time um well what I'll say is that nobody's been more complimentary of my wrestling than Chris Benoit so on, on top of me liking his work him saying complimentary stuff to me about my work is the uh, uh up there with the nicest compliments I've ever gotten in wrestling because uh, it feels like it means something from a guy that talented um as far as the the tragedy and all that stuff goes you know uh said it before i i wasn't i wasn't surprised when i'd heard it meaning uh when when i heard that that they had all died my first thought was murder suicide uh really? the reason i yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's that's also because um, that's what happens. You know, like that's just what happens. It's there's murder suicides all the time. Um, there, there's also, I guess, there's you know people that that go in and slaughter a family. That does happen too. But but uh, yeah, I mean, I knew that that uh, Chris is uh, volatile. I guess so am I. You know, so so are all of us, um, and uh, you know, humans are capable of anything at their at their lowest moments. And so, yeah, I think it's a uh, it's a shame. It's a shame, and uh, you know, people are dead. Uh, uh, a little boy never gets to grow up and be you know what he could have became, and a brilliant wrestling career is tarnished because of it. Um, but uh, all I have to say, separate the art from the artist. The guy was brilliant. I I, I still adore his work. Yeah. Okay. Can we uh, before last thing we do, can we do a little uh, WWE locker room rapid fire? I'll just name a name. Just tell me the first thing that comes to your head. It could be one word. It could be a story. It could yeah. be whatever you want. Awesome. Lay it on. Uh, Triple H. Oh, sarcastic. Yeah, yeah, like a funny sarcastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Batista. It's the first thing I think. Hey. Uh, Rick Flair. 
If you say woo, the game's over. Come on. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, uh, okay. Uh, cranberry vodka. Cranberry vodka is what I think. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, JBL. Oh, Bermuda. Yeah, yeah. I think the dude moved to Bermuda, bought bought a rugby team, like real weird. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know. Huh? Like, all right. Yeah, Bermuda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. CM Punk. Uh, I mean, again, that would be Chicago, would be the first thing, but uh, but that's too much like Bermuda, uh, Pepsi. Uh, Jeff Hardy. Um, uh, colorful hair. Pain. What's that? Pain. Pain. Oh, um, the fire. Uh, Bruce Pritchard. Oh, brother, love. Yeah, what a character that was. Yeah, I was. Oh. There, I was. I was there as a kid. WrestleMania five when him and Piper at the Piper's Pit. Yeah, I was there. No, yeah. dude. <laughs> Yeah. Was that uh, with, with that old uh, talk show host, um, Morton Downey Robert Jr. Down, yeah, Morton Downey Jr. Was, Morton yeah, Downey, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> How was the Undertaker in the back? How was he? Man, I was intimidated. I was, I was super intimidated. I, I know he was. Uh, I was a kid, uh, early twenties, and um, it, like nobody fucked with that dude. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. I, I've been sworn this whole time, and now here I go. But uh, yeah, no, nobody like um, like nobody, like nobody was messing with anybody. But I mean, like this guy was respected. You know what I mean? Where they might bust each other's chops. I don't know if they'd even play around with him as much. But but I would see him still cut it up, drink beer with the guys, play their dominoes, all that stuff. With when I first got there, mind you, it was a huge, different generation. Um. But, uh, yeah, I was always just scared. I was always just scared. I felt like like he looked at me like I was a boy. And it's probably because I looked at him like I was a boy, you know. Booker T? Booker T? Uh, so that's a, it's a little different because, like, it's when you've gone on to – like know his what like I, I know Charmel. Charmel, you know, I, I I asked advice when picking out an engagement ring and stuff. And and so like just even that, you know, he's become more of a human to me than than the Undertaker will. Just even because the fact that Booker T is more of a human name than Undertaker is. And there's no way even now me calling Undertaker Mark seems silly coming out of my mouth. He's he's above human to me, you know. RVD. Oh yeah, same thing. Once you've, if you've smoked weed with somebody socially, then it becomes like, like uh, they're no longer a human cartoon anymore, or they're little. Like at least they're you're in their cartoon world too. You know what I mean? Not just subject to it. Yeah, I like him a lot. Bob Holly. Oh, that was a scary dude too. Uh, but ultimately, by the end of it, Bob's been great. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. To a young me, the word would be scary. Yeah. Uh, Ray Mysterio. Uh, I have favorite wrestlers and all that stuff. I, Ray Mysterio is the reason I'm a pro wrestler. Uh, when I saw him on vacation in a Mexican restaurant on TV in this package that Mike Tanay had in the whole Mexican restaurant, like the, the whole kitchen staff and everything came out of the back to watch this video of this Rey Mysterio guy. And I saw this guy like me doing this. And wow. So Rey Mysterio, he, you know, everybody knows he's the best, but he's still underrated. I love Rey Mysterio. Yeah. 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 Can him I, and I the first time I ever here. met yeah. Oh God, dude, Ricky Steamboat. That's the reason I fell in love with wrestling. Ricky oh, Steamboat. Okay, wow. okay, they're the same guy. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that was my guy growing up. That was my guy. Oh, loved Ricky. Steamboat. <laughs> so, what were you gonna say when you met Ray? First time I met Ray. Okay, I was doing TV for WCW. Me and uh, you know Crowbar. Mm -hmm. yeah. Storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we were we were a team for a while. So I, 
dude, I've, I've wrestled Sean, I've, I've wrestled Kurt Angle, I've wrestled, you know, big name guys. Yeah. I was so nervous to meet Rey Mysterio. And this was before he was, he was a WCW Cruiserweight guy. He wasn't a big yeah. name. But like you said, I think it's the fact that I was a smaller guy. Like, you kind of live vicariously through this amazing performer. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. I walked up to him, dude. And I go, I go, hi, Mike, I'm Ray. I go, I, I, I mean... <laughs> Hi, Ray. I'm Mike. I go, I'm just going to leave now. And I just walked away. <laughs> that was the first time ever. Probably the last time I ever said anything to Ray Mysterio. I don't know why. I was just nervous to meet him. <laughs> oh, that's funny, dude. <laughs> oh, man. Last name, Johnny Ace. Oh, so if we're talking name association, what I think of is Funaki. Because uh, then I think of Funaki doing doing Johnny Ace's voice. Because you know, <laughs> everybody does a Johnny Ace voice. But it's really funny when it's in broken English. Right? So I think of Funaki. And, uh, Johnny had a... Dude, it's, it's a brutal job that he had. Uh, uh, but I like Johnny. I, li I do like Johnny Ace. Uh, and... I, there's no way I would want that job. I couldn't do that job that he had. Um, being talent relations, what an awful place to be to know what the bosses think about talent, to then have to look at talent, to not to then keep secret what you know about them. You'd rather not know any of this stuff. Awful position. Uh, and whenever I've been honest with him, he's been honest with me. Brian, this is awesome. Thank you so oh, much, man. Thanks. This has been great. This was, this was fun. Uh, I really, yeah. I really had, had a great time, man. Are it's you on true. Facebook? I don't think I have a Facebook. I have a, a Twitter <laughs> for sure, or an X now, I guess, and uh, um, uh, Instagram. Yeah. I'll, I'll friend you on, on Instagram. Uh, but okay, hey, before, we, before we go, um, just, um, is there anything you want to plug? Any social media? Any, uh, any ways people can get in touch with you? No, I mean, hey, if you're a promoter looking to book me, bkschoolofpw at gmail.com. Other than that, I, I got nothing, man. Uh, hope to see you on the indies out there, you know? This is awesome. Well, are you just Brian Kendricks on Instagram? Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Brian Kendricks.